Today we're doing Halloween thrift flips. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're gonna do a light up candy bowl. Perfect for trigger treaters. I've got some black spray paint. I don't know what this is, uh, but I got it from the thrift store. And also I have a popcorn bowl, which came from the thrift store. I'm gonna use some polish remover, some acetone to just take this down just a little bit. I can, it's textured just slightly so that it's raised up and I want it to be flat. The idea is not to completely erase it, just to get it cleaned up. And then I took the little felt bottom feet off of there and I'm gonna get all that residue off as well so that my paint is nice and flat. Just gonna give it a good cleanup. Then to keep the inside of this orange when we spray paint, I'm gonna cut some paper to go on the inside so that it is protected. I'm just using some extra scrap paper I have from another project, measuring off approximately how much I'm gonna need, making sure that it reaches from the bottom all the way to the top because there are a variety of cutouts and then holes all around the top. And I don't want any spray to get in there and mess up that beautiful bright orange inside because if it's bright on the inside, then it's really gonna glow nicely. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the inside, and then if there's any gaps, you put a little extra piece of paper there, and I'm just using some masking tape to hold that in place while I am doing my painting. Just go all the way around until it is nice and secure on the inside, but don't let your tape overlap on the outside because that'll, you know, you won't be able to, um, you'll have like a little skip in your paint, and you don't want that to happen. It was already black and that's fine, but I wanted the finish to be exactly the same on both the bowl and the other. Okay, so this is the Thrift Flip Road Trip Open Challenge hosted by Crafting Cousins and usually Teresa of Our Green Acres, but I'm a special host today. So I hope you will check out the links below and watch everybody's videos. Okay, so these are complete now. They are completely dry. You can see what we have. I used a satin finish, so it's got a little bit of sheen to it or a little shine. Take out the inside and look, it worked perfectly. Everything is nice and bright and orange on the inside and shiny, smooth black on the outside. I love this. This is going to be so nice. And as you heard me say just a moment ago, we're going to use some lights on the inside. So stay tuned for that. Now we need to attach down this, whatever this little canister thing is, to the bowl. This probably came off of some type of a lighting, light up item or something, I think. Okay, so I decided to put it on a little pedestal and this was thrifted as well. So I'm gonna scrape off the candle wax and then spray paint it. And while it is drying, I've traced the line from the top of that, um, the black pumpkin stand. We're gonna call it a stand because it'll be in the middle. I'm going to use some of my Fix-All adhesive to go around here right toward the inside of that line because I want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of glue gushing out around when we put our little pedestal thing back on. And then I'm going to quickly put down some hot glue. Now I'm using hot, very hot glue out of this gun because you need just a little more time to work to get it in place. So I'm going to take this, settle it right back on the line here, press it down, hold it in place for a minute. Then I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to turn it to the side in a minute, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing. Go around the edges and let that spill down so it, it clings to the bottom and the sides. So the pedestal bottom is finished and we're going to assemble it like this. In order to get this to sit down properly, I'm going to use these little wooden blocks, which I should have painted black, but I didn't. Hindsight, I'm going to tell you now, if you do something like this, go ahead and do it black so that it doesn't show up. I'm going to use a little bit of my Fix-All adhesive, and you can use E6000 or whatever you have, or super glue, whatever you have. And then a little bit of my hot glue, and I'm going to go around on the inside where it is. I'm holding my finger on the top so that it is touching so that this will be flat on the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. 
Metal often has issues like rejecting the adhesives that we use, but if you use something like Fix All or E6000, it's going to hold it longer. But the hot glue just holds it in place until that dries. So don't put any weight on this or anything until you've given it a, a good amount of time to dry. I'm going to use four spots because I think that that will be enough to hold it in place. And I'm going to go all the way around putting this down. If you have um, maybe something that is more narrow than this, you're going to want to use a smaller block because the curve is going to push it away from the wall, if that makes sense to you. These were the right size to be flat, so it was perfect. And I believe I got those little blocks at Dollar Tree. I'm almost certain that I did. Now, same process here. We're gonna add some of this Fix All Adhesive or the Dollar Tree Super Glue, whatever you wanna call it. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue here and then quickly flip this over and center it down on that pedestal. Now I'm gonna take my lights. I just have a strand of copper lights here. I'm not even gonna unwind them, but you can do whatever you wanna do. You can use Dollar Tree lights if you would like. I am really not sure where these came from, but I could almost bet that they're from the thrift store because I'm cheap like that. I love to thrift. So there you go. Look how pretty that is. And the orange on the inside really makes that bright and glow. Doesn't that look like a fire in there? Oh, I love it. You could also use uh, white lights in the top if you would like. And you see these are white instead of the yellow color. I'm gonna give you some options here on how you could use this dish. If you just wanted to use it for decoration, you could take some batting or pillow stuffing or some of that spider web or creepy cloth and wind your lights down on the inside of it. Then you can put some more on the top and then in a moment, you'll be able to see that you can kind of see through it and it looks really cool. So you could skip the, the lights in the bottom if you wanted. Isn't that cute? It looks like lightning in there. I love it. Or you could use a pillar candle and this is battery operated candle and then put your stuff in all around it. Then you can add some little bones or some little bugs. I've got some little spiders here. Whatever you want to put down here would be really cute. You could also use some of those little ornaments or you could use it as a candy dish. You don't have to put anything in it. You guys can watch my videos Mondays and Thursdays at five central standard time. Okay, so this is the yard flag sign. I'm gonna use a thrifted yard sign this is really pretty, kind of primitive looking maybe. I've got some paint and of course you'll need a paintbrush and then I have this sign that I have from the thrift store. And then I'm just gonna push the back out. I do make quite a bit of a mess and you have to be careful because sometimes they'll break. So just go gently around and yeah, I have a big mess. I did scrape the words off of there with that little spatula I had. I'm gonna clean up the frame I'm going to paint this white. I'm just using some chalk paint because it dries quickly, but you can use acrylic, whatever you want to use. And you don't have to paint it if you don't want, but it's going to help the, the bright yellow and orange stand out on the pumpkin flag. Then I'm going to take some of this, um, this is stain or wood, well, it's like a color tint. And it comes from um, plaid. And then I'm just going to use a foam brush and put this on to give it more of a, a dark wood grain type look. With this type of coloring, you can put it on, wait a few minutes, and then wipe it off if you would like. Um, but I like the, the stripes and lines. It looks more like real wood. Okay, so see the white under there makes that look brighter, and I like that. If you didn't put that on when you put your Mod Podge on, it would be a little bit darker. But you can do whatever... Um, you like to do. So I painted the bottom borders because the sign's a little short. I painted those black and then I'm going to trim this off just to make it a little bit easier to work with. It's got about a half an inch left on each side I think. Okay I'm going to use my Mod Podge and this is just the um, 
the Mod Podge that is not shiny, but you, you know, again, use whatever you like. This is making it my own because we like to make it our own. And then I'm going to go all the way over, even over the black paint, so everything has the same little finish when we're done. And I'm going to place this down and start pulling it into place. Press it with your hands. You can use any type of a little um, squeegee or whatever you have to get these in place. When you get these wet, you know, they're kind of pliable. They're going to kind of, you don't want to get your pattern distorted. So you can go ahead immediately and put on a layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to do this pretty thickly. And I'm going to be sure to go over to the sides all the way to the edges. You can see the little white line when you get to the edge. Then I'm going to let it dry. Now we can trim off this fabric on the sides. It's nice and crusty and thick like a piece of paper because of the Mod Podge. So I'm going to flip it over, take my rotary cutter, pressing down pretty firmly, and I'm just going to go all the way down to the end and pull that right off. The reason I have to press so hard is because there's, you know, there's a seam on the top and the bottom of the flag. So that's why you see the little struggle there. Then where the two meet, I decided that some of those beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree would be a great way to cover the seam. It is a glittery ribbon, and I'm just going to put it down with a bit of hot glue, just eyeballing it to make sure that it's, you know, pretty even. And then using the little spatula or squeegee thingy, I'm going to press it down to make sure we don't see a lump underneath. It'll help smooth out that glue and make it nice and neat. And then we're going to flip it over and then trim off the extra ribbon. going to fit it back down into the box frame, press it down. You can use some hot glue to close it back up. And because Trish loves her backs finished, I did this with her in mind. And I finished it off with some crafting paper. And you'll just need to glue it down and then you can give it a nice clean finish with your crafting knife. And this is how it will look. Very nice. Nice big sign. I am having a 17,000 subscriber giveaway and you can win. You can enter for a chance to win anyway. Put pumpkin in the comments and read the directions. Okay, now it's time for the charming candle. This actually at the last minute I changed my mind and decided not to use lace because I found my scarf before I found the lace. This is a little bit of trim. Here's this beautiful scarf that I thrifted. And here is a little cat medallion that I used on another project that I pulled it off. I'm going to lay this beautiful jar down and I'm going to cut off. I wanted to make sure that I saved that fringe off of there. So I'm cutting above where it has a seam on it so I can put it aside and keep it for something else. It's pretty. Look at that. This kind of looks like a spider web to me. I don't know. It just looked Halloween-y. And it was calling to me more than the black lace that I had. So I decided to go with it. Going with my gut here, y'all. Hope you like it. I'm going to use some hot glue and protect my fingers. And then press this down into there. Trying to make sure that my lines are, are pretty neat. And I haven't distorted my pattern in any way. Folding it over. Trimming a little bit more. And again, I'm trying to trim underneath where the patterns go together so that it doesn't fray. A little more hot glue. And we're going to lay down a nice seam here. Then you can trim more if you need to at this point. Alright, so I'm just going to stuff that in there while I can flip it over and glue off the bottom I'm adding this down and going around then I'm gonna trim off what I don't need that's kind of hanging from the top I trim it twice because um, you know I was in was having a creative block trying to figure out exactly what it I wanted to do with the top of the jar but I did finally cut it down a little bit more and decided to just tuck it over on the inside. 
it would have a pretty decent finished edge if I did it that way with nothing sticking up so that's what I decided to do I just went along the inside with a little hot glue and just tucking and kind of rolling my fingers down and pushing it into and away from the outside of the jar and so this is how it looks almost like a vase so I decided that I want to use my little trim my little lace trim here and go right around where the neck of the jar is very easy to do this is such an easy project if you have your supplies you will not have to even pay anything for this grab your scraps you know I have a bag that I keep next to me that is full of ribbon scraps and little stems and greenery pieces grab what you have and work with that so I'm just gonna wrap this around I don't want to do it too tightly And then once I get back to the beginning, I'm going to take another layer and go right underneath it. And you could do this the opposite way. But it's easy to do this, how, this way. And it was a second thought anyhow. Okay, so this is a little piece that came off of a headband. I'm going to put it down first. And then I'm going to put the cat right on top of it. And I called it a cat medallion, but it's actually a sticker, like a, a puffy sticker. But I've used it before and I love it. It's so pretty with the wording in the background. So I'm going to put that down on there, and this is how the little jar is going to look. Then I'm going to take my candle and put it on the inside, and of course it's flameless. This is how it looks when the lights are dimmed. Do you like this one? I like it. So here's an option if you like the top to be finished off. You can take some ribbon in a coordinating color and cut it off then you can just use it to wrap around the top it's going to wrap around the outside and fold it over toward the inside and you just use a little bit of glue to hold it in place so to give you an idea of what that would look like you could do it like this you could also use like a black ribbon or something like that finish it however you like if you've enjoyed this video so far i would love it if you would subscribe to my channel You can just keep going along. All right, so here are the projects. We've got our pedestal candy dish, the lace candle, and the sign. If you enjoy these videos, a thumbs up really helps my channel and it lets me know that I did a good job and I'm always striving to do that for my viewers. You could share this video with others who you think might enjoy it. Be sure that you comment below, pumpkin, for your chance to win a box of crafting goodies. And be sure you read the directions. Shout out to Trish and Kay from Crafting Cousins for inviting me to be the special co-host this week. I really enjoyed this. I've had so much fun working with you guys in the past and again now. And I want you to check out the link in the description box to their channels and also to find the playlist to support the others. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.